In this video, we're going to look at Oregon's offense against Ohio State in a crazy Saturday college football. Big win for Oregon going into the horseshoe, beating a top four team in Ohio State, and obviously an extremely talented team. But for the second straight week, you have a Pac-12 team going against a team from a league that's known as being physical, and the Pac-12 is kind of looked down upon, but both Pac-12 teams, whether it was UCLA last week against LSU or Oregon this week against Ohio State, on the line of scrimmage, both sides of the ball. The team that won was the team that was able to run the football and stop the run on the other side. Both Oregon and UCLA just dominated in that fashion. But we'll look at Oregon this week with a few different run schemes. Joe Moorhead's done a great job going in there. This is his second year. Had been at Penn State. Obviously, he had a little bit of a track record going against Ohio State and had had quite a bit of success. And we'll look at what he did schematically this week against Ohio State. This first play is a run that they ran quite a bit and had quite a bit of success with. It's just a power read uh, with just a little bit of a wrinkle here. You can see Ohio State's obviously in man coverage here. The coverage comes into it because they're able to get the edge. And what they do right here, obviously power read, they're going to double right there to the back side. He's working back. The gap engine right there. He's pulling. But on this, it almost looks like they know that this end is going to squeeze down and they're going to get a give read. I personally would love to run power read if I know I'm going to get a give read. And right here, this guard just flip, goes all the way around to try to help seal the edge. This wide receiver right here comes in and he actually cracks first defender inside on the second level and he actually takes two for one and he's able to get around and pin it. But we'll look at it real quick so you can see there's the double team right there going to the backside, basing that nose. He's coming around as you can see. As they're getting the mesh, he squeezes down and this guard just rolls all the way around it trying to pin everything outside. And as you can see, man to man, he just comes in right here to pin that linebacker. And right there, you can see takes two for one. Now there's nobody left on the edge, and you even got a guard out there to lead up on that safety. As you can see, that's a really good scheme right there against that man-to-man -man there early against Ohio State. This is the first touchdown of the game. Put Oregon up 7 to nothing right there early, and they had it ran a couple more times, and we'll take a look at that as well. This same play later in the game, a little bit different formation. They actually have a twin set, so two receivers down here. Got their fullback, and they leave him backside. Again, going power read to the left. He's coming in to take most dangerous right there inside. Cracks right there. Obviously, that would have been tough. That guard would have had to take him. He might have set the edge even. And right now, that guard is pulling all the way around, knowing he's going to get outside of this defensive end that squeezes. So he squeezes down. He just says, I'm going to pass that up. I'm going to get over there to the outside, try to help pin. Now you see he's running inside out. And now it's a race to the pylon right there, which Oregon obviously wins right here for the second touchdown on the exact same scheme against Ohio State early. We'll look at it one more time. Again, just running power, leave that fullback backside. Knowing that end is going to squeeze, they're able to crack and lead up and help seal that edge, get the running back into the end zone. You see this wide receiver right here does a great job, has his base, puts his shoulder on him, is able to lower his hips, stop his momentum, so then he can keep him from running through, setting the edge right there. Easy, easy walk-in touchdown there for Oregon, and it just continued their roll. As you see right here, it puts them up two scores right there in the second half. This is almost the exact same spot of the field where they ran it the first time and were able to score. Right here again, they're in trips. The difference here is that Ohio State is in zone and not man. Uh, this is as close as we have on the clip, but you can see here's the receiver. He comes in cracking. There's the linebacker, and here's this guard coming around. Now it's zone, so he's going to come up. He's going to be able to set the edge. But as you can see, he's still running, getting out there in front. Instead of pinning that guy, the corner, he's able to get out here. Now he's probably going to kick him. So then he's going to set the edge and he's going to try to get vertical right there. Again, just a great play. Even though that was against zone, you can see how that defense has been squeezing and let that guard just go ahead and roll all the way to the sideline, pin first inside. Now you got the edge out there with your running back running in space. It's going to be really tough to stop without getting an extra hat over there to that side or just leaving your end wide. And at that point, now you're just running basically inside zone uh, with your quarterback because you see if that guy's wide, there's a good wall right there for that quarterback to run. So either way, uh, but right there, obviously getting that squeeze, good hand, getting the ball in space. Here's another scheme from Oregon that really took advantage of how well these defensive ends squeezed and try to scrape everything. So right there, just running inside zone. They're in an unbalanced set, so they got two receivers on the line over there. Extra guy, there's your fullback. So they basically got four receivers over there, running back over here weak. Nobody out here in this space. So they're running inside zone strong. He comes over here, he jabs at that defensive end, and then he goes to the flats. And what that does right here is with him squeezing, you're going to get that pull. And typically, what the defense coordinator is probably saying is, okay, we're going to have squeeze. He's going to scrape over the top for the quarterback. We should be good. Uh, but right here, obviously, getting this extra gap with that guy getting out there. Squeeze. We're getting the pull. And now, 
he's either got to take that guy or he's got to take the quarterback, one or the other. So now you're just creating that extra gap with that guy coming from the far side. He chases there. Now there's nobody in that gap right there, and the quarterback's able to exploit it, get a pretty good gain uh, against, the, again, like a really good defense, and that's what it makes those guys do think, uh, especially whenever you get these unbalanced sets where obviously there's an option where that quarterback could just flip the ball out there if they don't get their numbers over there to that side. So uh, this is another good scheme uh, that Joe Moorhead came up with. And obviously they're able to execute whenever you got a quarterback that can move like that and is that accurate. You can do a lot of different things right there and big play right here. And we'll look at another clip of them running the exact same play. This is a really critical situation here for Oregon. As you can see, it's fourth quarter, 242 left, up by seven, third and three. If they get this first down, they're able to milk the clock and, and pretty much seal this game. So right here again, they're in this unbalanced set. What Ohio State does on this one is they walk down there playing man-to-man. -man. So obviously that takes away any option out here to throw the ball out there. So obviously going inside zone, he's coming across, he's going to the flats here. As you look at what the quarterback's reading, he's going to read this defensive end. If he squeezes, he's going to pull it. Now he's got a double option out that direction. So this DN squeezes so hard that that left tackle ends up just strong-arming that guy, put him into the gap and trying to wash him as far as he can go. So now he's just saying, hey, I'm going to get that pull. We're going to try to get out wide. Obviously, the numbers in the box right here, Ohio State's in that critical situation. They're playing hard down into the box. It's a pull, and he realizes there's nobody out there into the flat, so he just flips it to him right there. Now he's able to get that first down on an easy throw and catch right there. Again, Ohio State playing man-to-man. -man. This guy here is probably responsible for him man-to-man. -man. This safety is responsible for him man-to-man. -man. And then these two guys right here are just box players, basically. So... Really good call here by Joe Moorhead. I'm not sure if it's just one of those things because it doesn't look like he's really stretching that thing like he's going to run. It's almost like it's just, hey, we want to pull it and we want to throw it. Uh, but right there, as you can see, if he was man-to-man, -man, he wasn't able to get there, and he's stepping into the box as well as these other guys trying to stop that run in that critical situation. So a really aggressive call. Good job right there by Joe Moorhead and good execution. Getting the ball out there in space. Don't be afraid to be aggressive, uh, trying to win games, not just trying to hold on, and that's what... Oregon did right here, and that's what they did pretty much all day. Uh, we're able to just make plays, and we're more, the more aggressive team. Here's another unbalanced look from Oregon. Again, they got three receivers over here. They got their fullback over there strong. And what they're running here is they're running inside zone that direction with the fullback coming back here to the backside D end. So they actually have a little bit of RPO. These guys are blocking man on, so three for three there. That's their read, okay? If that guy steps into the box, they've got a swing there with the running back. If he goes out with the running back, they're going to pump it. Now they should have the numbers, so you can double teams to those backers, to that backer. He's coming to the backside base right there. So pump that, run inside zone right there. Could be a good play right there either way, but right here as you play it, you can see the quarterback, as soon as he catches it, he starts eyeballing that guy. He takes a step to him. He sees that he kind of hangs. Flip that ball out there to space to your running back. And now he's running. He's chasing those guys. Really could have just ran those guys off in man-to-man, -man. Uh, but easy completion there on the RPO. And obviously, if this backer would have been out of the box, pump that. Now we're running. Our numbers are great right there for the run. Uh, but right there, probably a little excited that they're able to get that thing in space, which is what everybody really wants to do right there when they call RPO. This is probably my favorite pass concept from this entire game. And Oregon ran it a couple times, and they were very successful with it. So right here, they're in a little bit of a squeeze set. He comes up high corner here. He folds in behind. He goes to the out, 10 to 12 yard out. Right there, high corner, 10 to 12 yard out. He releases, he goes to the flat. So really just getting to a flood from this condensed set and a two receiver set as opposed to three. So we'll play and see how exactly it sorts out. As you can see, they're going, these two guys are going vertical, basically stacked in behind each other. As you can see, he's putting that foot in the ground and rolling to that. Out as this guy's going over the top of the corner. Right there running back, he's just right at the line of scrimmage, running and out. So there's a ton of space right there. Just give him the ball, see if he can get up the field, get the first down on the third and 11 which is what he's able to do right there. Just flooding the zone right there, which it looks like it could be a two-receiver zone, and then all of a sudden it turns into a three-receiver zone as far as that bat getting out, which is one of those things that I think can really stress the defense, especially if you can do it in a lot of different ways. So right there, taking a completion. I mean, that's a four-yard completion right there on a third and 11, and just based off of flooding that zone and having too many guys over there for the defense, uh, they're able to take advantage of it. And right there, obviously, was a big conversion there early in the game for Oregon uh, to get those guys moving a little bit, get them on the board. Here's another look at the same concept, this time over here to the left side. This receiver right here is going high corner, he's going out, he's going quick out right there. So again, flooding those zones over there, 
Starts off with a, a doubles condensed set. So good job avoiding. I'm gonna take him right there. And as you can see, he's probably gonna take that corner right there. Here's the outside back. He's eyeballing this running back that's going to the flats because last time they ran this, they got a big completion right there on a third and 11. And he's chasing hard right there. So as that takes place, now that guy is the only guy that can guard this intermediate out. And obviously his eyes are in the backfield on the quarterback and he's not able to get to it. Great patience right there, stepping up in the pocket. Good ball right there on his body. Helps that guy get a nice run after the catch. You can see there's the high angle corner over the top, but nice throw and catch. And you can see the read right there again. Running back going to the flat sets one. If you can take it, cool, take it. But right there you can see he gets out leveraged by that outside linebacker. So get off of that. And now you can work that next window. Probably got to throw that down a little bit. Make sure you're not running into, into that linebacker or that corner whoever's down in that flats. But really good throw and catch. Again, explosive play uh, right there in the fourth quarter of a, a one possession game. They're able to stretch the lead a little bit during this drive. Another play here from Oregon. Everything looks new and all this in their shotgun, but this is just the old truck. We got a guy motioning in. He cracks at the end. That tackle pulls around. He bases right there in the center, actually pulls around as well. Crack inside, toss the ball to the back and let him go. So just an old truck play right here. Good call again. Obviously, short yardage against man to man. You can take two for one right there. Now, there's nobody in this third of the field right now with that running back on the hash. A tackle out there at the hash, and the center's rolling there as well. Again, if you can get to this point, but there is literally nobody in that third of the field with everybody else with the ball on the hash and a lead blocker, you're going to be successful. So, right there, got those guys sealed. Running backs outside the hash already. The nearest guy outside the hash is right there, just on it. So, really good call, really good scheme. Uh, good job knowing it's man to man right there, and then just outrunning those guys and, and using their leverage against them uh, whenever you can come in and take two for one. Right here on one of these last touchdowns that Oregon has, it shows some really poor eye discipline here by Ohio State. Obviously, they probably ran this split zone quite a bit, running inside zone weak, kicking over there to the, to the tight end. As you can see right here, he comes across, he just slips it, now he's blocking to help that quarterback. So again, getting a play fake here by the quarterback, rolling that direction, knowing that he's got an extra guy off the edge there to help seal, keep that guy from getting in his face. And all that, the only guy they have in this route is they slip the tight end and he just runs a corner. That's all they have. This safety literally runs right by the guy. So this safety, you watch him, he's coming down, the guy's coming right for him, and he almost tries to avoid that guy. And surprisingly, it's not just a run, it's a play action right there. And they're able to get over the top for a touchdown right there. So really simple concept obviously once you've ran it quite a bit as far as that split zone it's probably going to be a lot more effective and right there there's a bad discipline there by that safety and was able to get out of position good time to call it first and 10 again joe Mo moorhead being extremely aggressive trying to score not just trying to hold on that's what they're able to do right there again uh, just a little play action nothing crazy just one receiver route, the fullback out there leading to help seal that edge so you can have a little enough room to throw it, and they're able to connect right there for a big touchdown. Here's another boot from Oregon, again, showing outside zone, that direction, he comes around, seals the edge, faking right there, going over there. So what they're going to get is they're going to get a buzz to the flats right there, and then you get that intermediate corner uh, out right there as he's rolling. So I thought this is a really good play for Oregon. So faking that direction, he's rolling away. Harder for a right-handed guy to roll to his left. Quarterback really impressed me on this, though, so he gets his shoulders around knowing he's about to get just blown up here by this linebacker and throws an intermediate ball right on his body. So that's extremely impressive right there again. So you can see, great job sealing right there by the fullback. Quarterback gets his shoulders around, able to drill that. Obviously, doesn't just get murdered and annihilated, but right there, knowing that you have a chance for a big shot, puts it right on his body for a big play there. So, with that being said, I think Oregon is a really good team. Uh, just like a couple other teams in the Pac-12 that are extremely underrated, I think these guys are going to be right in the mix of everything as far as the college football playoff and everything concerned. They obviously had the biggest win so far of the college football season, and going on the road and winning Ohio State. And that quarterback is the real deal. And their defense is obviously the real deal as well. And once they get those other players back, uh, it's going to be real tough. It's so like we said last week with UCLA, it's going to be tough to beat these guys. So I think there's some good teams in Pac-12. Uh, maybe maybe they're the best conference, deepest conference in the, in the, in the country. I don't know. But uh, they definitely whipped teams that supposedly, and conferences that supposedly, are supposed to be more superior up front. And they took care of Ohio State, which is obviously the, the best program in the Big Ten. 
and they just moved him around, pushed him around all day, ran for a lot of yards and held them to almost none, made them throw the ball all day. Uh, same thing with LSU, which you can debate on LSU, where the, what the pecking order for LSU will be this year in the SEC. Uh, but with that being said, Oregon played a phenomenal game on the road, very impressive. Uh, let me know what you guys thought about it, and we'll see you guys next time.